Hello everyone, the time has come again, that time where the DCS aircraft ferry pays a visit in the night, and those of us who love aircraft in general, or World War II aircraft in particular, have our hearts filled with joy. Obviously there are some of you who are not that interested and will just shrug your shoulders and move on with your day. But of course there is a minority who hate to see anybody else having fun, and as a result of this minority there will be much wailing, pissing, moaning and gnashing of teeth on the forums and reddit. I love this minority because their hatred of fun and their impotent rage fills my little black heart with joy. Welcome to my first look and flight of the DCS Fokker Wolf 190A8. The astute among you who already have the D9 may have noticed that the door is much longer at the front. This is because the A8 has a radial engine whereas the door was fitted with an inverted V12. The A8 began production in February 1944. It's heavily armoured, so your little virtual self will be quite well protected. As we have come to expect from Eagle Dynamics, the exteriors look magnificent. Some of my favourite little exterior details are the inset navigation lights on the wings, and the little antenna just in front of the tail wheel under the fuselage. With the foreplay part of the video out of the way, let's climb inside and get to work. You shouldn't be surprised to discover the interior looks fantastic. They've gone with my favourite look, which is the in-use or nearly new look. If a module looks too new, it kind of kills immersion for me. Conversely, if a module looks too old and battered, I keep expecting the fucking thing to fall apart like a Chinese motorbike. The level of detail here is quite astounding. Something that really captivated me were the number cards behind the gauges. If you look closely, you can see little cracks, folds, dents and scratches in the cards. Now this is just an insane level of detail, and I would suggest to Eagle Dynamics that the pension package for this graphic artist should include copious amounts of cocaine and fellatio on demand. If you have some kind of weird electromechanical fetish, you're going to shoot columns of solid jizz when you see the amount of circuit breakers in this aircraft. But please wait till after the video, as I find the idea of flight sim types playing pocket snooker somewhat unsettling. Startup is quite involved, but not too taxing on the noggin. In terms of ergonomics, the 190 was years ahead of its time, so startup often feels much more modern when compared to other World War II aircraft. I'm not going to bore the fuck out of you with the whole process, I'll do that in my upcoming tutorial series instead. After a few goes, you'll have the process down and you'll be starting up in under a couple of minutes. On startup, I did notice a couple of bugs, which I hope will be ironed out quickly enough. The first is, on release, it's impossible to set an axis to the prop pitch. You have to do it manually by clicking the throttle. The second seems to be an audio bug on engine start. The engine comes to life with all the volume of a very discreet mouse farting in the corner. This may be an issue with the current build and radial engines, as I did notice the same issue with the i16. Before you go running for your pitchforks and suicide vests, please remember this module is early access. The ground handling of the Anton is surprisingly pleasant and stress-free. Due to the added armour, it takes a little bit more power to move than other World War II aircraft in DCS. When manoeuvring on the ground, all you have to remember is stick back locks the tail wheel. When you need to turn, release the stick to centre and use differential braking. As I prepared for takeoff, I couldn't help but worry that this beast had lulled me into a false sense of security. Any second doubt was going to go all blue hair bulldike and turn my scrotum into a hairy handbag. With not inconsiderable trepidation, I advanced the throttle to take off, lit a cigarette, and instantaneously smoked it to the filter using only my sphincter. Much to my amazement, take off was a pleasant surprise. I couldn't have been more pleasantly surprised had I been asked to be judge for a fellatio contest for supermodels. At no point on the takeoff roll did I feel that resentful homicidal rage that emanates from most other World War II aircraft during takeoff. In terms of ease of operation, this part of the flight is quite comparable to the P-51. Looking back at the runway, I couldn't believe I got this far in a moderate crosswind without so much as a millisecond of stress. Because we all know flying in DCS without weather is for pussies. The primary role of the Anton was as a fighter, but with the increased armour and the ability to carry heavier loads, it had a prominent secondary role as a ground attack aircraft. Currently in early access, it can only drop a 250 pound bomb. There are two 13mm machine guns in the nose, and 20mm cannons on the wing roots. These are all synchronised. There are further two 20mm cannons out on the wings. As you can imagine, this aircraft is capable of pulling a lot of rounds downrange. It's a very stable gun platform, and it's possible to get a lot of rounds on ground targets with relative ease. The Anton wasn't generally used for attacking bombers, but I thought it would be fun anyway, so here goes. 
The Anton is heavier and therefore not as maneuverable as other World War II aircraft in DCS. However, its armor gives it greater survivability, and what it lacks in agility it makes up for in firepower. While I make a total tit of myself chasing bombers around the sky, let's talk about early access and bugs. The compromise with early access is as follows. In exchange for a discount, you purchase a product that's more than likely not finished and will contain some bugs. In DCS, this generally means the aircraft will be cosmetically fine and fairly functional. However, there may be some weapons and sensors missing on early access release, and systems and flight models generally require some fine tuning. If you want a fully complete module, do not, under any circumstances, purchase early access. If missing features or bugs annoy you to the point where your tits explode, again, do not buy early access. In fact, before you buy early access, you should honestly answer three questions. Number one, am I happy enough with the module in its current state to purchase? Number two, am I happy to wait for features to be added or bugs to be squashed? And number three, are the aforementioned bugs and missing features going to debase my enjoyment of the module? At the end of the day, it depends on you and your ability to keep your fat little fucking fingers out of your wallet if you're not absolutely sure. Moving on to bugs, there are a few. The first and foremost in my eyes is the engine, short of nose diving into the ground, is pretty much unkillable. I imagine this will be resolved fairly quickly. There are some binding issues such as the engine axis and the RPM axis or controls not being bindable at the moment. I imagine this will also be resolved fairly quickly. The second arm switch isn't functional and you can still fire the machine guns with safety on. Additionally, the instrument lighting isn't currently working. These are not huge issues by themselves and I imagine these should be resolvable fairly quickly. They're certainly not deal breakers for me, but if they are for you, then wait for full release. As I come in to land, completely forget about the crosswind I set, and almost have a collision as a result. I'll share my final thoughts. Oh sorry, spoiler alert. The Anton is a fantastic addition to DCS, looks amazing, and is great fun to fly. It's an early access, so expect some bugs. In a top trump sense, it's not on par with the P-51 or Spitfire, but this is a simulation. And when has a simulation ever been about balance? Whatever happened to only working to your advantages and developing tactics to beat a technologically superior foe? Airquake is fun and it's a guilty little pleasure that I sometimes indulge in. However, there is a certain subset of the Airquake fans who are just obsessed with balance. And this makes me wonder if somewhere way back in France in 1944 there was a German squadron equipped with Antons. And if in that squadron there were two pilots who, seeing that other squadrons were equipped with Doras, were so angry at the injustice they refused to fly. Then I imagine the conversation going as follows. Hans, Johan, there's an alarm. Get to your aircraft. No, Herr Oberst Lieutenant. We can't fight the Spitfire in those, and until we get the Dora, we'll sit right here by the fire, carefully waxing our new vaginas. Passing waypoint two at thousand.